Welcome back to Top Solid. In this next video, we're just going to do the rest of the end milling. And this is going to go really fast now because everything is set up the way that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this face, right click, and go to end milling. And here's what's going to happen. Notice, of course, I grabbed my tool, which was a half inch shovel that I was using before, but notice it automatically activated the G54.1P1. That's because that's the WCS that makes the most sense based on the frame orientations. Awesome. I can come in here and say, you know what? I want to use the same feeds and speeds just by dragging and dropping. And I'm done. I've now made that tool path. Pretty cool. It's doing its thing, and away we go. Now, maybe I want to take this down to the next level, so I'm just going to control, drag, and drop to that level. Why not? And then maybe I'm going to control, drag, and drop to this next level. Again, the choice is yours, how you want to program your part. My goal is just to show you how quickly you can program the part. Now, let's do one more. We're going to drag and drop this into that big hole, because again, we can, and it's going to rough that out as well. So now that that's all roughed out, let's go look over here in the project tree for a moment. Notice WCS1 54.1P1. That's what's being used for all of these. Okay. Now, I want to go ahead and I want to continue machining on this orientation. Everything's now roughed out, but I want to first finish roughing. Because if you notice, my half-inch tool here, let me go turn off my machine for a sec so it's a little bit easier to see, half-inch tool couldn't reach into those corners properly, could it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of have Top Salad help us out. I'm going to say, let's take this same tool path and drag and drop it on the same face. And here's what's going to happen. It's kind of neat. It's going to create nothing. <laughs> Pretty exciting, right? In fact, all I wanted to do was have the exact same area described, and I'm going to go pick a smaller tool. I'm going to grab my quarter inch cutter. Let's see what happens. Wow, check it out. Top Solid automatically is continuing to rough where my half inch tool couldn't reach. Fantastic. Let's go ahead, validate that, and let's continue roughing this down. I'm going to go to here next. Why not? That's going to nibble down those corners. Let's go down to this altitude next. And that's going to nibble out into that area and up in that area. I'll show you that tool path here in a sec. Perfect. I mean, think about how smart that is. Here, it's making small moves to nibble. And here, because it was more material, it changed the lead and lead out to that area. Awesome. Now, from here, now it's time to start finishing. So let's go ahead and start finishing. And I'm going to start by just taking this same tool path, and I'm going to drag and drop it onto this face. I'm just going to make one change. Here, I'm going to tell the software, Let's go ahead and go to zero. Let's also leave maybe 15 thousandths on any walls or islands that you may find. And I'm going to set this to some big depth of cut because I just want to make sure I'm finishing just the faces I'm selecting. So there's that tool path. Let's go to geometry and let's maybe add a couple more faces. And that's right, you can add multiple faces into the program to machine all at the same operation even. Why not? So now if I click OK, I'm now finishing all of those Z faces, and you can see that in the beautifully updated stock model. If I zoom up, you can see the extra stock I'm leaving on the wall. Nice. Now, before we go ahead and start finishing the walls, maybe you want to machine out here. Maybe not. I'm going to go ahead and finish the walls anyway. So what I want to do next is I'm going to go here and go to side milling. When I go to side milling, I want you to watch what happens. You see how it's trying to wrap everywhere around the part? Well, that's because there's material everywhere around the part at that Z level. But I don't want that. I only want this local feature. So I'm going to go up here to my quick settings balloon, and I'm going to double click on the icon right there and change to what they call truncated contouring. Think of it as the local feature mode. Perfect. Done. I mean, think about how simple that was. Let's go ahead and add another face. Let's go here. Again, it's going to try to do more than I want. Maybe if I would have finished those outside walls first, we don't have to go change this, but that's okay. Sometimes you just do things in the order you want. Now I have that face done, and I'm going to double click on the number two here to get that balloon up so I can change this to truncated contouring also. And that's just going to get the local feature. But in this case, it's a bit strange because it's just stopping right here, and I want it to stop out here. So back to full detail, and we're going to use a different methodology of trimming toolpath. I'm going to go here to my lead in and out, and in this little white box here, I'm going to double left click, and it puts me into a trim mode, which is kind of neat. And all I'm going to do is go to my first machined, and I'm going to select right there. My last machine, I'm going to select right there. And you notice I just trimmed the toolpath perfectly. Done. 
I have now got the toolpath to do exactly what I want. Moreover, if I look up here, you notice how it's trimming up that toolpath to the real stock condition even? Why not? Kind of cool. And we'll click OK. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and machine this detail here. So maybe I'm going to take this toolpath. Eh, you know, just do it again. Why not? Take this, right click, side milling. And here I will do the truncated contouring because that will work perfectly for this type of feature. It's picking everything up. I'm going to double click, switch to truncated. I have my local feature. Maybe here I'm going to go ahead and add this face as well just because, hey, I can. Perfect. And I'm done. Now I've done a lot of machining on G54.1, right? So now what I want to do is I want to quickly, before we're done with this video, I want to finish the faces of all of the outside faces. So that's where we're going to go next. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to rotate this so I can see a little bit more clearly. I'm going to select this face, right click, and go to end milling. And now watch what happens. Do you notice it automatically activated the origin for that position? I didn't have to tell it. Now, I could. I could come in and I could tell the software whichever one I want to use. I could use 54.1 if I really want to, but we want 54. Point, I'm sorry, 54.1 P1, but I really want 54.1 P5, and that's what the software chose for me, which as it turns out is exactly what I want. Cool. Now here, I'm going to switch back to a bigger tool. I have a half-inch finishing tool. Perfect. Go check my feeds and speeds, make sure that's good. Again, I'm going to run this maybe at 9,000 RPM, and let's do maybe 8,000 chip load. Perfect. Last thing, we don't see any toolpath. Why not? Well, that's because my stock to leave is still at 10,000. Let's set that to zero. And now we have toolpath. Beautiful. So we're going to green check, and away we go. Now I'm going to take this 54.1 P5. B90, C0. Check this out. I'm going to drag and drop this onto here and watch what it does. 54.1, P2, B90, C90. It automatically found everything for me. It's kind of handy if you think about it. You can spend less time worrying and more time processing parts. So I'm going to bang out the rest of these really fast and like that our milling portion will be done and in the next video we'll bang out some drillings.